Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Duelists of Pyrazine has been fully revealed, and while I don't have any plans to cover the included cards at the moment, I have noticed we've got a bit of a pattern going on here. These last few Legendary Duelist packs haven't just been centered around famous characters, but ones that have an affinity for a particular attribute. For instance, Pyrazine is all about Earth, the one before, Duelists of the Abyss, covered water monsters, while Whirlwind and Gloom handled Wind and Dark respectively. Should this pattern hold, we've only got two attributes remaining. And while I'm not particularly invested in seeing Arcana Force support in the light-based one, I do need to use my powers of precognition for one particular archetype before it's too late. For those of you that don't know, I have a bit of a track record of speaking support into existence, so before Duelists of the Inferno is revealed, it's time to talk about Axel Brody's archetype of choice, Volcanics. Now, why is this topic so important, I ask all of you, knowing full well that you've already commented down below about how Pyro needs more support. But for those of you who are not in the know, well, uh, it's that, exactly. Thanks to the constant vigil of community member and Pyro Progression Series founder, Pain96, we've been made painfully aware of Pyro's lack of representation in Yu-Gi-Oh! over its two-decade-long history. And the math speaks for itself. Of the 11,364 TCG cards logged into the official Yu-Gi-Oh! card database, only 119 of them are Pyro monsters, making up only 1.04% of the entire card pool. Only 9 spells and traps even mention Pyro in their effect text, and if we add the 6 that are relevant Pyro support, or for themes that are primarily Pyro, we get 125. Which brings us to a staggering 1.09%. In comparison, Cybers, the game's newest type, has almost double that, featuring 230 monsters with roughly 30 pieces of spell and trap support depending on how you count it. So a type that's only 5 years old, a quarter of the entire game's lifespan and about as long as how Pyro's been around, now makes up 2.28% of the entire card pool. It'd be hilarious if it wasn't so tragic. And speaking of Pyro-relevant themes, of the dozens of archetypes available, the only ones that prominently feature Pyro are Lavals, Flamevels, Hazy Flame, and Volcanics. That last one being the only one made purely of Pyros. So you can see why people would be in an uproar for an update. Another type that was largely neglected, Rocks, got a huge facelift with the release of Secret Slayers, being elevated from Stun Deck Stooge to the best thing that happened to the Excavate mechanic since Sylvan's. So why shouldn't this beloved control deck get the same treatment? So now, it's time to do my part in lighting a fire under Konami's R&D department to make the pyro support we all deserve. Let's fire up the search engine to check out the theme, see how they make our opponents feel the burn, then see what kind of kindling we can pyro in. It's time to turn up the heat with Volcanics! But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and there's no better way to get there than on our Duel Runners. Our next stop is 30k, where we'll have Jack Atlas Explained, which includes Resonators, Red Dragon Archfiend, and whatever other cards were used by the Masta of Fasta! We've also got our Discord, where people share images like this. I don't want to know where this came from. Its very presence fills me with terror. I'm also on Twitch, where you can join me for viewer duels and progression polls pools, and don't forget about my Patreon, where you can gain access to my videos early, reach some of these milestones, as well as helping to determine which explained videos I make. Thank you all so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So what's the deal with Volcanics? Well, they're a series of fire attribute pyrotype monsters, and they just love dealing burn damage. They love, 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 love it. They'll skip battle phases to do it, they'll give your opponents monsters to do it, they'll even take battle damage to do it. They are that dedicated. And they get some help from a little sub-theme called Blaze Accelerator, which we'll be covering in a later part of this video. Let's get started with Volcanic Rat, a level 1 normal monster with 500 attack and defense. This mutated mouse dwells in the core of active volcanoes. No amount of heat is too much for it to bear. Now this is a weird addition because this came out long before we started to see really good normal monster support. But now you at least have unexpected die if you want to get some fast material onto the board, or painful decision as a way to get ammo for Blaze Accelerator. But that does mean you're taking a tiny little rodent and shoving them into a cannon barrel and launching them at your opponent at blazing fast speeds, and... 
now that I say that out loud, that actually sounds really funny. Um, let me go see if I can find one. I really want to try that out later. Volcanic Blaster is a level 3 monster with 1200 attack and 600 defense, and when this card is destroyed and sent to the grave by battle, you can place a Volcanic Monster in your deck on top of your deck. Now, I'm not sure what the standard of power was at time of release, but having a floating effect that didn't even net you a draw, but rather guaranteed what your next draw was going to be, seems pretty bad. Especially nowadays when destruction is happening primarily by effect. It's kinda like those effects that make you skip your draw phase to search a particular card. Except this is even worse, because it could all be messed up by one shuffle before you get the draw. But Credit where credit is due, this can put Volcanic Rocket on top of your deck, which in turn gives you access to a majority of your game plan, so I can't blast it too hard. Volcanic Counter is a level 3 monster with 300 attack and 1300 defense, and when you take battle damage while this card is in your grave, banish it from your grave, then if there's a fire monster other than Volcanic Counter in your grave, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the amount of battle damage you took. Now, Funnily enough, this is a mandatory trigger that can fizzle if your grave isn't set up right. There's no, you can banish this from your grave, so you have to. And if you have no other fires in grave at that time, then I guess you're out of luck. It being mandatory means your opponent can play around it fairly easily, attacking in for the least amount of damage first, then going in for the heavy hitters. Getting the most out of counter requires careful timing, and an almost preternatural sense for how your opponent will play in any given scenario, but can reward you with a big damage payout if your opponent is unaware of your grave, or their own life points, even if you have to take a punch in the face to pull it off. Now that's what I call sharing the pain. 96. Volcanic Slicer is a level 4 monster with 1800 attack and 1200 defense, and once per turn you can inflict 500 damage to your opponent, but if you activate this effect, this card can't attack during this turn. Yeah, get used to that phrase because we're going to be seeing it a lot. While our monsters have some nifty stat lines, an 1800 attack normal summon was nice, though not incredible for the time, and you should definitely attack with Slicer if doing so would mean more damage or you'd weaken your opponent's board state, but if you're being walled out of attacking, either by a big defense stat or some kind of stall effect, Slicer is more than happy to take the turn off and bean your opponent for 500. Slicer is a no-nonsense kind of monster, they really cut to the chase. Volcanic Hammerer is a level 5 monster with 2400 attack and 1500 defense, and once per turn you can have it burn your opponent for 200 damage times the number of volcanic monsters in your grave. And like Slicer, if you use this effect, it can't attack this turn. We're going to be getting some cards that just love dumping volcanics into the grave, and since it doesn't check for different names, Hammerer can easily get to 1000 damage per turn, which can be quite the threatening clock once things get down to the wire. And while being a one tribute monster did slow it down in the past, now we have the previously mentioned Volcanic Rat and normal support, so one unexpected die can give you all the material you need to summon them out twice as fast. I just wish the name was better. Hammerer. That's so phonetically muddled. Hey, advice to any future thing namers out there, don't put your er sounds right next to each other, it'll annoy everyone. Volcanic Queen is a level 6 monster with 2500 attack and 1200 defense that can't be normal summoned or set. This card can only be special summoned from your hand to your opponent's side of the field by tributing a monster your opponent controls. And if you special summon this card, you can't normal summon or set this turn. Ooh, goodness, this is one of those old kaijus. The ones that didn't let you keep your normal summon when you did so. Once per turn, you can send another card you control to the grave to inflict a thousand damage to your opponent, and during your end phase, either you tribute one other monster or take a thousand damage. So it's nice that it keeps you from just tributing Queen away to avoid burn damage, I just wish we weren't handing out free samples. Like, I know we like doing burn damage, but we don't have to give our opponent a means to do it themselves. While in the game, I'm not trying to convince other people how fun my deck is, I'm trying to win! Heck, their drawback effect doesn't even trigger during the standby phase like Lava Golem, it's during the end phase, so your opponent gets a chance to burn you before it burns them! And of course, links exist nowadays, so the hope of your opponent keeping it around long enough for it to do some damage is little more than a smoldering ember. Volcanic Eruption is actually a dinosaur card. Moving on, Volcanic Recharge is a normal trap card that returns up to three volcanic monster cards from your grave to your deck. Now, not too long ago, we talked about a monster that needs as many volcanics in the grave as possible to make the most of their burn effect, so what gives? Do we want monsters in the grave or not? 
Well, that's just one facet of the deck. Once we get to the Blaze Accelerator portion of today's presentation, you'll see why we might want to shuffle up our resources, though admittedly there are better options. Hitting ourselves with a limited transmigration prophecy isn't quite as good as getting a literal plus two in card advantage, so when it comes to recharging, this volcanic card comes up a little short. Alright, so far we've covered all the volcanic cards that are just doing their own thing, now it's time to cover the Blaze Accelerator cards, as well as the volcanics that would work best with them. First up we have the base form of Blaze Accelerator, a continuous spell that can target a monster your opponent controls, and when it resolves, you send a pyro monster with 500 or less attack from your hand to the grave, and if you do, destroy that target. But you can't declare an attack during the turn you activate this effect. So if your opponent has a big monster you can't or don't want to deal with, you can just trade in one of your smaller pyros to take it out. And if you have Slicer or Hammerer on board, you can still make inroads on victory by dealing burn damage. Though, is it just me, or are we putting in a lot of work just to keep our game plan from slowing down? Not much of an accelerator then, is it? Tri-Blaze Accelerator is also a continuous spell, and can only be activated by sending a face-up Blaze Accelerator on your side of the field to the grave. It can send any Pyro monster from your hand to the grave to destroy a monster your opponent controls and inflict 500 damage to him, but you cannot declare an attack during this turn. The trade is pretty good, because Tri-Blaze is a better card in just about every regard. You can now send any Pyro from your hand to the grave to activate the effect, and it deals 500 damage on top of it, so you are moving towards the endgame. You still can't attack the turn you use this effect, though I guess it's unreasonable to ask that it fix everything. Though, the improvement does come at a pretty big opportunity cost. You need to already have the basic form of Blaze Accelerator on board, otherwise it's just a dead card in hand. And sending the base form to Grave is cost, so if your opponent negates or destroys Tri-Blaze, then you just got scammed out of a lot of cards. Honestly, I think we could have stopped at giving our opponent both barrels. Involving a third was probably a bit too much. Thankfully, an absolutely wild piece of support got released during the Pendulum Era. Blaze Accelerator Reload, a continuous trap that counts as Tri-Blaze Accelerator while in the Spell and Trap Zone. More on why that's important in a bit. During either player's main phase, you can send a Volcanic card from your hand to the grave, and if you do, draw a card. And during either player's main phase, you can banish this card from your grave to send a Volcanic card from your deck to the grave. So we have the first activated effect, helping you cycle cards out of your deck while loading up the grave with Volcanics, and if it ever hits the grave, you can send another Volcanic. It's not really as destructive on its face as the other accelerators, but it serves a much needed support role, which is something we've been lacking up till now. You can't just have a whole party of damage dealers, someone has to be around to cast the buffs. Now, to understand the true power of Blaze Accelerator, we need to talk about Volcanic Shell, a level 1 monster with 100 attack and 0 defense. Once per turn, you can pay 500 life points to add another Volcanic Shell from your deck to your hand, but this card must be in the grave to activate and resolve this effect. So not only can Called By stop this, but so can DD Crow. Now, this fits under the 500 attack threshold for Blaze Accelerator's destruction effect, but the best part is that it now resolves as a plus one. For the low cost of 500 life points, the shell you spent replaces itself, so now it's like you never even discarded a card while your opponent lost a monster. This gets even sillier with Blaze Accelerator Reload. As a trap card, you can proc this during your opponent's turn, so you can discard a shell to get a new card, then on your turn, pay the 500, get a new shell, discard it, get a draw, then use the shell you just discarded, paying another 500 life points, and during your opponent's turn, you can activate the effect to draw again. That's three extra draws over the course of three turns, which is great for digging deeper for your combo pieces, or drawing into the hand trap you were looking for just in the nick of time. And all of this is just how Shell worked in Volcanics. It actually saw quite a bit of play in a lot of decks, purely because it was an easy way to turn life points into card advantage. We hadn't quite reached the era where the graveyard was a second hand, or a way to trigger combo effects. So when you discarded cards for things like Karma Cut or Phoenix Wing Windblast, you really felt it. But with Shell, it was relatively painless. And while it didn't speed your tribute summonings up, it was replaceable tribute fodder for cards like Monarchs. And honestly, that is a lot of meta relevancy for a card that's part of a side character's arsenal. Huge props to Axel, because this is one shell of a card. 
but don't leave out their chimeric cousin, Volcanic Scattershot. They're a level 2 monster with 500 attack and 0 defense, and if this card is sent to the grave, you inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent. And if this card is sent to the grave by the effect of a Blaze Accelerator card, you can send two Volcanic Scatter Shots from your hand and or deck to the grave to destroy all monsters your opponent controls. This also means you'll be pinging your opponent for another 1000 damage because there's no hard once per turn on this card. Now initially this was a pretty nice payoff for playing Volcanics. It gave you a Raigeki to deal with problem monsters and was another avenue for burn damage. But it was kinda redundant. Because you would send it off a Blaze Accelerator card, you were already destroying a monster anyway, so the additional pops weren't getting you much more value. It's not bad, it's just that it wasn't reaching its full potential. But that all changed with the introduction of Blaze Accelerator Reload. Now if you had a Scattershot in hand, you could pitch it for a draw in the middle of your opponent's main phase, and then trigger the board wipe. And if Reload ended up in your grave, then you could pull the trigger on that same effect whenever you wanted during either main phase, with the Foolish Burial effect. After Reload's release, there was a very, very good stun deck that ran a small volcanic engine paired with a lot of continuous trap cards, using Magical Planter to get value from one that were already used up, as well as to get Reload into the grave to fast track its Raigeki on demand. Now, because it has you sending 3 Scattershot in total, you can't normally pull this off more than once in a game, which is why a card like Volcanic Recharge might be a consideration. But there are much better ways to accomplish what it does with more focus, keeping your attention from getting scattered. And a really good way to make sure you have all the Blaze Accelerator cards you need is Volcanic Rocket, a level 4 monster with 1900 attack and 1400 defense, and when this card is summoned, you can add a Blaze Accelerator card from your deck or grave to your hand. This is an incredible boon to the deck, and is easily its best summon. But hey, I didn't expect anything less from a TCG exclusive card. While nowadays you're likely to zero in on getting Reload, at the time it could get you access to Blaze Accelerator faster and helped you cut down on playing copies of Triblaze, because now you could just tutor it up as needed, even getting it out of the grave if it gets removed. It also plays very well with the aforementioned Continuous Trap Tribal deck, because this triggers off of any kind of summon, which can be Call of the Haunted. Bring back the rocket, get your accelerator, overlay rocket with another level 4, and now you have a Call of the Haunted sitting around on its lonesome, ready to be exchanged for a couple of cards via Magical Planter. It's cool to see a starter card have such an amazing knock-on effect for the deck it helps out, because it's clear to see that rocket really helps your game plan blast off. Volcanic Doomfire is a level 8 monster with 3000 attack and 1800 defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and can only be special summoned by sending a Triblaze Accelerator you control to the grave. So now you can see why it was so good that Reload counts as Triblaze, because otherwise you'd have to go through the whole line of continuous spells to set this summon up. During your opponent's battle phase, your opponent must attack this card with any attack position monster they control, and when this card destroys a monster and sends it to the grave, destroy all monsters your opponent controls and inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each monster destroyed by this effect. Now that sounds really powerful, and when you're on the offensive, yeah it is. On the receiving end, it's actually kind of a nonbo? Let me explain. So if you have Doomfire and a bunch of other monsters, yeah it's best to be able to smash an entire lineup, and get some extra burn damage in before everyone else goes in for the direct attacks. But that's the thing. We're playing Volcanics, a deck that keeps locking you out of your own battle phase. So then you let your opponent attack into you on their turn, right? Well, yeah, sure, if your opponent wants to play into this. There's no way to drop this in the middle of a battle phase to surprise them, so they can either find removal to not deal with Doomfire, or just summon their monsters in defense position so they don't have to deal with it. But even if you do have the golden scenario of your opponent having a Link monster that has to attack into it that isn't strong enough to defeat Doomfire, it's going to immediately blast their entire field, thereby ignoring what makes this effect so good, making dinky monsters attack into it for massive battle damage. Your opponent would have to be rocking a field of 2600 to 2900 attack monsters to make this effect profitable. And like I said, that's if we even get to that point. Now, it does still help you deal with monsters even though you skip your battle phase, that's pretty dope, but even in a best case scenario, you're giving up your reload for the summon of a monster with no protection that might not even get to attack. It looks very, very cool, don't get me wrong, but if this thing doesn't get a retrain in the future, 
it's doomed to obscurity. But that's not our last card, oh no, because, as it turns out, we had another quick effect Raigeki before the reload scattershot combo, and that was Wildfire, a quick play spell that has you paying 500 life points. You destroy a face-up Blaze Accelerator card you control, and destroy all monsters on the field. Then, special summon a Wildfire token, which is a level 3 fire pyro monster with 1000 attack and defense in attack position. Also, you can't declare an attack this turn, though if you're activating this on your own turn, and then something's gone quite awry. Because if you use this on your opponent's turn, you get all the benefits with the only drawback having a vulnerable wildfire token. Though careful timing can mitigate even this. Heck, you can send a reload with this effect, blast the board, and if your opponent rebuilds from that position, banish the reload you just sent for the scattershot combo and wipe it out again. That's so wild. Alright, so that's all the Volcanic cards, but what do we do with them? Well, while our fiery aesthetic might lead you to believe that we want to burn up as many resources as possible to bring the game to a fever pitch before burning it all down, we actually want to play Stall. With all the effects we use that shut us out of the battle phase, we can't rely on big powerful monsters. But with all the burn damage we do, we can totally sit back and let those effects take the wheel. So we'll want to play as many cards as possible that help move that along, as well as any stun cards cards that can keep our opponent from playing while we boil them alive. So what can we play to help them out? Well, I know I've had my fair share of bad times being locked out of the game via Solar Flare Dragon. If you have two on board, your opponent can't declare an attack, and you'll be burning your opponent for a thousand damage during each of your end phases. Keep some revival effects on hand so you can summon both at the same time, and at that point your opponent will be forced to use some kind of effect removal to break the lock. I mean, if we can't use the battle phase, we might as well make it so your opponent can't either. Royal Firestorm Guards is a must-play card here, as it's basically an on-theme pot of avarice that's also a body you can use for things like Link and Xyz summoning. It can even shuffle in other copies of itself, increasing your longevity. It is a little annoying that you need to have four targets, but our scattershot and shell combos really only send three. But we'll get plenty of ways to fill our grave besides, so it's only a minor inconvenience. Alternatively, you could also just run Pot of Avarice, and that'll recycle any extra deck monsters you run that aren't Pyro. Though both are susceptible to DD Crow or Called by the Grave, because you need to be able to shuffle in all those targets, so keep an eye out for that. If you need just a little bit of extra damage to close out the game, give Soul of Fire a try. By banishing Doomfire, you can clock your opponent for 1500 points of damage off a single effect, and it's not once per turn, though your opponent is going to get a draw each time. But if you're winning the game, it doesn't matter how many cards they draw. In the spirit of the theme's origin, give Duel Academy a try. That's right, they made a real field spell with this. It gains a bunch of effects depending on the monsters that are on the field, and Pyro is one of them, giving you a pop anytime you activate a trap card once per turn. Something I'm sure we'll be doing a lot of. And if your opponent brings any dinos, sea serpents, thunders, machines, fairies, or fiends, then you can access a whole lot more. As for a silly tech pick, Super Polymerization. It's strange, I know, but not only can you take advantage of dark boards to make Drago Stapelia, you can also interrupt Drytrons. Both Blaze Phoenix, the Burning Bombardment Bird, and Ignition Beast Volcanon require a Pyro Monster and a Machine. And while you could try to mix Volcanics with Fusion Machine strategies like Cyber Dragon and Ancient Gear, I think it's much more fitting to have our opponent do the work for us. And hey, Volcanon is even removal. And that's all I have to say about Volcanics. I can see the makings of a great new burn strategy if only they're given the chance. And while I can't guarantee it'll come out before or after the Light Duelist pack, I'm confident in saying that the Fire Duelist pack will be Duelists of the Inferno, and Axel will be frontlining the pack with a new swarm of Volcanic cards. I mean, what other theme could they possibly tap for this? Battle in Boxers? No, wait, that's actually a really good pick. Uh, who else could they tap for this? Salomon Great? Wait, that one's also really good. Uh, but that's only two. Uh, who else could they tap for the third slot? Flame Swordsman? I need to stop talking. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Do you think Volcanics are due their moment in the sun, or are they doomed to forever be a meme, accumulating in the comments section and Twitter posts of various videos until the heat death of the universe? 
Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to show your support, ring that bell so you don't miss an episode, and share this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander, Ashling Waltz, Nebula Navigators, Third Dynasty, Ava Goulet, Adam Zagidel, Benjamin Meisner, Biohazard011, Eric, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh!, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Howling Zangetsu, In Blink, Ironic, John Manji, Julius Sneezer, Larakia, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Ruxith Sarani, Shooting Star 3300, The Fresh Prince of Con Air, The Wizard Moose, Tyler Cranston and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders, Bear Sharktopus Studios, Chaz Ghost, Corbinisms, Cozy Boat 275, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Jesus Garcia, Manga Pages, Marion James E. Picotta, Nitromo, RGS, Remt Bright, the Legendary Raven, and Too Much Adesu, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. I'm only able to continue doing this thanks to the support of these lovely people, so if you'd like to be a part of these credits, as well as help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, please check out my YouTube membership or Patreon links in the description to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you want to see another deck that's fire and mostly pyro, check out this video I did covering Laval's. And if you want to see two Yugi tubers going at it, check out Noah Jenk and I's latest series progression polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.